Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, I'm joined today by Dr. Zainab Defalla, who scored one of the highest scores in her cohort for the MRCGPAKT, a wonderful 92% overall, with 90% in stats, 90% in admin, and 93% in clinical. So first of all, really nice to see you again, Zainab. Well done. Thank yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I thought it'd be helpful, you know, if I sort of go through some of the questions that people often ask when they're starting to prepare for AKT, uh, yeah. whether it's for a first attempt or sometimes if someone didn't get through and they're wondering what could they change for a reset, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you've done really well. And I think perhaps some of your tips and what things you found helpful to prepare might help others for their AKT journey. So Hopefully. Well, yeah, thank you for giving your time to, to join today. No problem. So, um, if I start with a little bit about um, where are you training and um, at what point in training are you at the moment? Sure. Um, so I'm currently sort of halfway through ST2 um, in Salford and Trafford in Manchester. So I'm on a, a paediatric A&E rotation at the moment, but I'd switch to just after sitting the, um, the AKT in January. Okay. And what rotation were you in during your sort of AKT preparation and exam time? I was in a GP plus rotation with psychiatry. Right. Okay. And if you think about when you started to prepare for AKT, how long before your exam did you start thinking about it? Um, so I probably left it a little late. I gave myself about two, two and a half months ish to prepare, which I, I know is later than most. Um, but I think it was just about enough time for myself because, you know, unlike my colleagues who have families and, and children to look after and, you know, some colleagues are full-time GP trainees and also doing, you know, postgraduate diplomas and master's degrees. Um, so I didn't have any of those things really Um to think about so I was able to really study quite hard for a succinct amount of time um which helped me get there in the end but I think it's very individual and it depends on your own circumstances really okay and you mentioned that you were in GP plus so GP and psychiatry yes did you find it helpful having that day-to-day -day GP connection during your preparation Definitely, definitely. I, I didn't think it would um, initially. I think a lot of us just want to run home and do the question banks and try and get through as many question banks as you possibly can. Um, but you know, it's definitely the best rotation to think about starting to study for your AKT during. Um, you know, not only have you got those steady hours, you know, your nine to five, and you don't really work weekends either. Um, but it's just getting that applied knowledge side of things in, in your mind. So you're able to see patients who you've just read about and you can follow that guideline and really applying what you're reading about um, helps cement it in your mind more than any other form of revision. You know, I can recall thinking back to patients that I'd just seen, you know, the week before sitting my AKT while I was in the exam in order to help answer that question. So I really do think it's, um, if possible, to try and wait for your GP rotation before starting. And, and what rotations had you done in your ST1 year? So I'd done, uh, let me think back, I started with geriatrics, which was a very useful rotation as well. And then I'd done a pure GP rotation after that. So they're both six months. Okay, so you'd already done some GP and then you were in GP plus with psychiatry during your preparation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, know, you, you did it in, you said, about two and a half months. So you had to sort of get through a lot of work in that period. So, so you know, well, how did you prepare in terms of timetable? Um, how long were you spending each day? And what kinds of things, types of learning did you find helpful? Okay, so um, I didn't have sort of a strict timetable per se, but I knew that every weekday I was aiming for at least two or three hours um, if possible, and then at least double that on the weekends, which was obviously a lot of work, but it's what you have to do when you've only got a couple of months to, to go through everything. Um, 
So, you know, that's how I generally did it. And I started with the topics that I really, really dread um, first and got those out the way, which was really helpful for my confidence, um, you know, even in my daily clinical practice at that point. So it's things like dermatology that I didn't enjoy at that time and ophthalmology, which I know most of us don't feel confident with, and, and ENT, which are also common in general practice and we need to get comfortable with, click, you know, quickly. So um, I started with those topics first, looking through even, you know, your medical school notes, but then updating them with the most current NICEKS guidance um, and just basically trying to get that knowledge foundation first before I jumped into the question banks. Um, I think I also purchased the eMedica, I think it's called the Masterclass Bundle that had the two clinical crammers, um, a stats course and a health admin and organisation management course as well, which I started with as well at the very beginning. And it was very, very helpful in directing you to the high yield topics. I think that you sent a list out with high yield topics as well to focus on. Um, so I, I really got that foundation first before then jumping into the question banks that I mainly use just to highlight knowledge gaps and figure out where they were mm -hmm. rather than starting there and then working your way around that. I think that people um, overestimate the question banks a little bit. I think if you focus too much on them um, solely, you're limited to just the scope of what's on the question bank. And if anything else is asked in the AKT, which it will be, you're a little bit stuck. So I think, you know, the reading, doing the courses and you know understanding the, the real foundation behind things and the nice guidance is more important than anything else really what resources from the different things you said you did you know reading guidelines uh, courses question but what resources did you find most helpful um to be honest at the clinical practice more than anything else me enough um for the clinical section um, after getting that foundation of knowledge, the only thing that's really going to cement it all in your mind is seeing those patients every single day um, with the cases that you're covering and um, with your revision. Uh, your practice can help. You can try and direct them and say, I really want to see a diabetes case today. And the receptionists are brilliant and they'll often try and direct those sorts of patients to you, um, which was super helpful for me for the exam. Um, and for the medical statistics and the organisational management side of things, I pretty much only used the course um, as the basis. I think it was really, really comprehensive and very grateful because it, it did cover essentially everything that you need to know. And um, I didn't feel out of my depth at all in the AKT when those questions came up. I felt it was all covered. So um, I just focused on the courses initially and then reviewing the slides later on as a bit of a refresher just before the exam. Okay, great. And talk me through your exam day, um, maybe your preparation the night before and yes. the exam day itself. Talk me through how, how, how the experience was. So uh, the day before was more relaxed than most, to be honest. Um, I felt at that point, you know, in the week before, I've done pretty much all that you can really do in terms of the new learning. Um, so instead, I sort of made a bit of a list of topics that I know will definitely come up. Um, you know, child developmental milestones, um, the DVLA guidance, um, fit to fly rules, the things that you know will come up and will be a few marks that I just looked over you know I made those tables myself and the day before try to cement them as much as you possibly can with memorizing in your mind um and I went to bed early and then I had a morning sitting for the AKT and I knew the building um I knew the parking situation was pretty much non-existent so I'd already prepared for that uh, with a you know taxi and, and transport there um, on the day of the exam. So I think that's another important thing to try and figure out before exam day. That's another added stress. Um, to be honest, the exam is a bit of a blur. You're in and out before you know it. And I didn't think I did very well at all. I was very upset with myself. But um, I think it's because a lot of it, you're not going to know 100%. I think you need to be prepared for that. Um, it took a lot of educated guessing and thinking back 
to the clinical scenarios you see in your practice, you know, what would you actually do next if you got that result? Um, so, yeah, that, that's how it went for me. Hey, great. Um, so now if you want to take your whole experience and imagine that, you know, one of your colleagues in the year below you, they're just right at the start of their journey and they say, look, can you just give me your absolute top tips for someone who's a complete beginner they're right at the start of their akt preparation you know yeah. what would they be okay um so key thing is definitely the timing time it right um in terms of what placement you're going to be on during the rotation i mean i was tempted to sit a bit later in my st2 year like a lot of people do but i knew that i would be on an a and e block that i would really struggle with the long hours and the weekends so try not to follow what everyone else is doing. Just time it for you, even if it means do it in ST3, because um, it's an expensive exam to sit and to resit as well. And also, you know, judge your own individual circumstances. If you know that two months would be too little for you, as it would for a lot of people, then just start early and gradually and, you know, save yourself that stress. I'd probably recommend, you know, at least three months, probably four um, if you have a family as well, especially in order to just get through things slowly but surely. Um, I think another tip is reading the question fully. I think I remember a near slip up in my AKT. Um, there was like a negatively phrased question, um, which of these is, you know, is not to be expected. I can't remember the exact question. And I missed it initially. It just didn't really make sense when I saw the answers. And then after rereading the question, it hit me that I, I totally missed the not in the question. Um, so and I think we're used to seeing the not in capitals or in bold when you're doing the question banks, but they, they don't do that in the AKT. So you do have to be very careful and read the question very carefully because it's easy marks lost um, when you knew what the answer was. So it's a real shame. Um, I think, like I said, start with the topics you dread, you know, make a list of them and just tick them off because once you're done with them, revision is so much easier um, and you'll feel like a better clinician. You know, I felt so much better in my day-to-day -day practice after conquering, you know, ophthalmology and ENT. Um, and funny enough, I think looking at the question banks, they were my strongest subjects at the very end was dermatology and ENT, the ones that I hated initially. Um, so start with what you hate first and then things will get easier after that and it, it becomes a more enjoyable process. You do feel much more well-rounded overall. Um, I'd also say about study leave because a few people didn't realise that you can take a couple of days personal study leave just before the exam, which is very handy. Um, I think here in Salford and Trafford, they allow us three days personal study leave in addition to your exam leave um my friend is in a deanery where she gets seven days personal study leave before the akt if you apply for it so you need to be aware of these sorts of things early because it can be super helpful for your last minute you know sort of cramming and um, before the exam and very reassuring to have that um and i guess the last thing would be maybe about the feedback reports on the RCGP website. Um, that was super helpful for me. Um, they give you an idea in areas that candidates didn't do so well in the last AKT sitting. So for me, it was, well, when I was reading it, sort of vaccine contraindications and um, ECGs, I think. I can't remember what else. So I knew that pretty certainly there will be some sort of question on there about those topics and lo and behold there was so thankfully you know as long as you prepare and you read those reports um you'll be okay and they help really guide your revision you know it explains that they won't test you on the intricacies of the timings of the immunization schedule which i know a lot of people still learn you know what vaccines are given at three months and four months and whatnot which you don't necessarily need to memorize um so that saved me a little bit of brain space and i think you made that clear as well in your clinical grammar course that we don't need to necessarily memorize that it's more the contraindications, the indications, that sort of thing. So do have a read of those feedback reports as well. Great. Okay. And and have you started thinking about 
your next uh, your SCA, or are you going to try to uh, enjoy the rest of ST two because you, know, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that till ST three. Exactly, that's my goal. Is I uh, yeah, I'm free now until SD three hits. Um, especially while I'm on A and E, I think I'll focus on portfolio, um, which is another thing that I managed to finish portfolio pretty much before starting my AKT revision. So, um, yeah, getting your portfolio out of the way is also another tip there. But um, no, I'm definitely not going to think about it quite yet. Um, probably when SD three starts, I'll start having to look into that a little bit more okay great well you know thank you very much for giving up your time and i'm sure that all those tips will help lots of people who are preparing and um, you know i wish you all the best with the rest of your st2 and hopefully i might see you when you come to prepare for sca next year thank you so much for this much appreciated thank, thank you, very you. Much.